Well, hi everyone. This is another image from my trip down to Cape Lewin the other day. So this is as the sun was going down. This is the shot I actually went down for, and it's an image of the lighthouse between these three rocks. Okay, so I've found one image that I like for my sky. I'm just going to add a little bit of something to that. Um, pretty much all I want to do is maybe add a little bit of exposure slight bit and also I'm going to add a bit of clarity to that sky something like that just give it a bit of a, a bit of a tickle maybe look at the vibrance um, yeah a bit of vibrance is kind of nice just to add a bit of something you see the lighthouse is glowing a little bit more now that was one of the images I want to export and the other one now before I do that I zoom into 100% just going to look at my um, detail and I'm going to add some sharpening up to actually no you know what I'm not going to sharpen this I'm just going to set that back to the default because it's basically just the sky I want okay so let's just forget that forget I even mentioned it okay I'm going to go now to my other image um, that I was chasing um, which will be the image for the foreground and uh, it was this one here I think so I'll command click so that I can select them both uh, actually no I'll have to go back this way sorry I don't know how to work this and see both images anyway you, you get the idea um, this is the one I want to do now you can see the sky is a little bit blown out and a little bit average and the foreground is a little bit average but it's not too bad so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use that sky and the lighthouse for the other one and then this is just going to be for my foreground interest maybe brighten up some of these rocks and mess around with that so I've already sharpened this one um, if I zoom in to 100% you can see it's pretty crispy from the front to the back so I, I uh, did a lot of uh, focus stacking uh, but sorry uh, um, yeah well um, focusing in different areas of the image and one of these I nailed pretty well it's pretty much got focus all the way through that's probably because um, I focused somewhere in the middle there and that's pretty much uh, I've nailed the hyperfocal distance so that's great when you do your um, if you're focus stacking look at the image that you've taken because not they don't always have to be focus stack you might find that you have one image where you've nailed the hyperfocal distance and you've got depth of field all the way through <coughs> which I have in this one okay so whenever I add my sharpening I get up around 100 percent and then I will put in you know if, if, if I'm looking at the skies sometimes you know you get to get a little bit grainy so I'll use some color noise reduction sorry some noise reduction just to fix that up a little bit and um, you know it looks pretty nice from there okay I'm going to go back to my basic tab <clears throat> and I'm going to have a look at my shadows it's going to open up the shadow detail there and then I'm going to get my clarity slider and then just whack in a bit of clarity you can see it's actually adding a, a nice bit of detail in that foreground and uh, maybe just look at the temperature a bit just add a little bit more warmth to it than was there and a bit of vibrance because obviously with saturate with lightness you get a bit more brightness bit more color um, bit of saturation perhaps something like that maybe not saturation don't want to go too overboard okay so I'm ready now to export that one and also my other one uh, which is 764 and I'm going to go down to 764 which is this one here command click and then I'm going to open them both up Okay, so they'll open up in Photoshop now and I'm going to layer them up one on top of the other so I'm going to grab this one I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click and drag and drop it on top of the other one there okay and now you can see that they're probably pretty pretty well aligned unless I've moved my camera slightly and it looks pretty good let's zoom right in 300% I'm just going to look at that rock no, I 
I can see it's slightly moved. Um, that may partly be to to do with the uh, the light change. But let's just do this. We're going to shift click on the background, select both layers, and then we're going to go up to edit and down to auto line layers, and we're just going to click the auto button and go. And let's see if that's made a difference. No, it hasn't done a damn thing. So I think it's just what it is. And we are looking at it at 300%. If I go um, back to um, 100%, you can hardly tell that it's moved. So got to be happy with that. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to make sure I don't go introducing halos in, in any weird, wonderful way. So let's get this image up here. You can see now because I have done an auto align layers on there it's, it's created a bit of a uh, misalignment and because I don't think it made much difference I could always go back into my history and um, just go back to drag layer and that will fix it and just don't do that auto um, thing -o. auto align layers just make sure that is 100% still looks pretty good okay good -oh. now I want to make a, a good selection now of pretty much the, everything in the foreground so let's go up and see how Photoshop goes with this we're going to go to select uh, let's go to select subject see what that does hmm okay that's interesting no that's not the way to do it command D to deselect let's go to uh, select sky now this should work a bit better okay that's done a pretty good job and we're just going to zoom in and uh, let's go command option zero and we're just going to fix this up a little bit and this is the stuff that takes the time <coughs> um, hmm. this is a lazy boy way of doing it I'm just wondering whether we should do it a different way. Let's let's do a different way. Command D for deselect, and let's go back to the background layer and have a look at our channels. It's Command Zero to get back to our full view size. There, we've got our blue channel, and what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that. So we've got a copy, like so, and now we're going to start working on that. Command L, let's bring up your levels. I'm just going to make the foreground as dark as I can um, and then the sky as light as I can so it doesn't matter if it goes completely white um, and we're going to create our mask that way I'm going to wipe out the, the lighthouse I'm not going to worry about having that in there but you can see I'm picking up um, if we zoom in picking up some nice details along there so we don't want to we don't want to get rid of those we have to be mindful of how we edit this. Okay. Okay, something like that. So you can see we've got lots of stuff to, to deal with, which isn't a real problem. So if we zoom right out, go B for brush, and we've got a black brush, 100% uh, opacity, shift left square bracket or right square bracket will harden up that brush. And I'm just going to paint all this in, make this all black. So this will end up, I'll end up just getting a better selection, a better mask of the foreground and the sky if I do it like this than if I use crappy Photoshop's automatic settings. And as I get closer to the edge there, I can make my brush a bit smaller. Now again, I'm, I forgot to bring my Wacom tablet into work so now I'm just using the trackpad again which is a little bit sucky um, and you can see we have some issues and we're going to have some fun getting close to the edge there but we're going to use a different technique to get right up to that edge and we, we may miss a few little bits and bobs here and there but um, that's life in the big city as they say now if I click once and then hold in the shift key and then click a second time 
I can draw a straight line between these areas. Got to be a little careful of that that foam there. Um, and the same with here. Click once, hold down the shift key, try and get as close to that horizon line as possible without going over into the white. Okay, I'm pretty sure that we've covered most of our bases. So the next thing we do is we're going to reach for our dodge and burning tool. And with the dodge and burning tool, we're going to be able to fix up some of these grey areas. Okay, so let's zoom out. Um, I'll actually hit X on the keyboard, our white brush, and just make all this super white. And this is a nice therapeutic thing to do, just cleaning up all this stuff. And you can get kind of close to where you think. I mean, you can get really accurate if you want to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to get close to it. And then I'm going to hit O on the keyboard. And that's the shortcut to the dodging and burning. So we're at, right now, we're on the dodging. And um, we've got our range set to highlights 100%. So if I go over those white areas, it'll only affect the, the greys in that white and take them back to white. You have to be a little bit careful on the edge there and I'm probably messing up some of it but you know what, life's too short. Then I'm going to hit shift 0 and change to the burn tool and we can see our range is set to shadows. And I'm just going to blitz along that edge there just fix up anything that may have been missed out. Now you're wondering about the lighthouse. I'm going to zoom into the lighthouse now. Go back to my brush tool, B for brush white is my foreground color and I'm just going to eliminate that and I'm going to zoom right in now and work out what I need to delete to keep a bit of that foreground. I'm going to make my brush really really hard so shift right bracket and just get in there and kind of do that it's a bit dodgy, but that's the way I roll. Okay, let's try that. So now we've got a completely black and white mask. I'm going to um, create a new. Um, see, sorry, <laughs> wrong, wrong, Fletcher, wrong. Sp I was in the layers palette, not in the channels palette. Oh, I make mistakes all the time. This little one here, you click that, and it'll load the channel as a selection. Selecting the sky, let's invert that command, shift I or control shift I if you're on a PC and just select that foreground. Go back to the RGB and we've got a very good selection there which we can bring up any time. Uh, let's go back here and add a layer mask. Voila! Brilliant! That's awful, isn't it? It's <coughs> very awful. So, what I like to do is not. Um, do that. Let's just go like this. Command I. <coughs> That's awful too. <laughs> so let's delete that. Okay, let's forget about that. Let's forget I ever did that. I'm going to add a layer mask now, and I'm going to up to. Um, I'm going to invert that, and then I'm going to go select. Load selection. And you'll see that in here we should have a blue copy. Click on that and click OK. It's got to be inverted, Command I. And then we're in business. We can start brushing away. So selecting the mask with the white as our foreground color. We're going to get a bigger brush. We're going to make sure our brush is pretty hard. So we're going to um, shift left square bracket. Make that feathered again. And we're going to start the low opacity and just start working our way along there just adding light where we want it to, to be. So I'm just going to put more emphasis on some areas, like so, and just feather that in the foreground here and just make this, this side of it a little bit lighter. Same with there. Um, go into this rock here and just add a bit more light on that side. Just follow the areas where the light is and 
and then we'll make another few passes over here go to 100% just to make sure that we're getting everything that we want something like that so we kind of want it to look like the light is it's a little bit spotted and that's actually not a good spot to do one bit on there something like that you select now it's not looking perfect as you can see but our background layer is the background sky is a little bit too dark okay now let's go back in here with a one percent opacity just just add a little bit more light just in those areas there we don't be too dark just to see that okay now we're going to click on the background layer duplicate it command J and change the blend mode to screen okay so now that you can see that's lightened it up and it's helped blend everything a lot better but what we're going to do now is add a layer master there G for gradient hold down the shift key and click and drag the wrong way I do it I do it the wrong way all the time so click and drag up and you're basically wanting to feather that, make that a little bit darker. So if you turn that on and off, you can see how that's it helps fix up the edge as well when you do that. Um, makes makes all the edges work, uh, all the masking that we've done. You don't get too many real dodgy areas. You can see that we've got nice details through there. It's a bit halo-y there, but I think that might have just been bit of bad luck more than anything else and there's our lighthouse back there so all of a sudden we've gone from that's our base layer to adding that light through there now I reckon I could probably do a better job on that um, let's have a look see go back to that and um, darken beef brush black as our foreground color Make a bigger brush, 30% opacity, and just kind of round it off a little bit more. Something like that, just to go try and match the clouds a little bit more. There is a bit of a um, dark spot going down in there, so um, it might be nice to just accentuate that rain coming out of that cloud there a little bit so what we want to do is we want to just load that selection again so if I command click on this let's see no not that one sorry I tell a bad bad lie um, if I command click on that it's just helping a little bit so let's just select that area of that mask uh, let's invert that to protect that area and we'll just go back to this mask I think this is the one under this is one we're working on here and just make it look a bit more like there's some rain coming out let's do a 1% opacity and just have that rain coming out of the uh, sky Feather that a bit. Does that look any good? Mm, no, I don't think it does. So let's just go back to our history and um, just take that back. Yeah. I reckon that's better. So that's the basis we've got the kind of light where we want it now it's starting to look more like the vision I had but now we can build on top of that um, I want to add more light again so let's go to adjustments <coughs> that a, a curve adjustment layer we're just going to change the blend mode down to screen and it's way too bright we're going to invert that command I and using our brush tool 
white is our foreground color. 30% opacity. I'm just going to add a little bit more light on this part of the hill. Maybe this through here as well because that, that cloud's a bit dark there on that horizon. A bit more highlight there and maybe just a bit of a tickle on that rock there. Um, I should go up there and select the um, rock again. Just go to the blue copy, click OK, and that way I can let's see, invert that. Let's see, Command Shift I, and then I can go back in and just add a little bit more light on that without going over the edge and creating a halo. Same with here, I'll just give this a bit more light on that edge there, just gives it a bit more dimension. So this is how I generally will paint with light in my images, um, deselect, and let's see what that's done. So that's given us a bit more of a, a good show. Maybe I'll add a little bit more to this front of this light, this there, this drop opacity and 20%, and just a little bit more onto that rock there, don't want it to be too dark, and this background is a little bit dark, so we'll just feather it off there. And the idea is to try and make it look as natural as possible. I'm just going to go hit along there for a bit just to see if we can't add a little bit more light through there. Just to, yeah, that's better. It's nicer, blends a bit nicer. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Um, that's before, after, that's before after. I reckon that's starting to look pretty good. Now let's look at colour. Okay so I always grab go for my teal and orange LUT that I love. Let's have a look at that. Mm -hmm. It's probably not helping in this situation so I might just disregard that. So let's delete on the keyboard. Um, let's go to our <coughs> select color. I'm looking at these yellows and greens, let's try those and see what we can do with that. If we remove cyan out, it gets a bit more orange, which is kind of nice. Put a bit more yellow in there, kind of just makes the color pretty cool. And then we can then try the reds. If we want to make that rock stand out, see that red just popping, that orange on that rock's popping a little bit more now. It's kind of nice. We can put more yellow into that as well, which pretty brings that up nicely. Let's have a look at our cyans. And let's see what happens when we put pull it in or pull it out. Okay, if we pull out cyan, it goes a bit more magenta in the sky. Put it in. Um, let's go look at the magentas here. If you take the magenta out, it kind of looks nicer. Maybe a bit of yellow in. No, yellow is not really doing much. So that colour is looking, looking a bit better. But it's getting a bit posterised, a bit kind of... Okay, something like that. I'm not, uh, not adverse to that colour, it's kind of nice. And let's do a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click our little hand here. Grab this color and just pull that a little bit that way. And I'm going to invert that. I'm just wondering whether we should put a bit of um, a bit of color. B for brush, just in that area where it um, where the light's coming in, making a little bit more saturated. This could be a little bit more saturated as well. Just so it looks a bit more like the sun's hit it. This cloud up here, this bit of orange, let's see if we can... What happens if we add a bit of saturation to that? Just that orange there is a little bit better. And um, let's see what that's done. Probably not much. Very, very little. 
So we could go up, crank it. That's a bit too much. Not too bad. Before and after. Yeah, it's just giving it a little bit of a lift in that area. Um, okay, getting close, getting close. Maybe this top left hand corner could come down a little bit in exposure. So let's do another curve. <clears throat> grab the hand, grab point, click on the area you want to darken, and just pull it down like so. That's better. Invert it. Grab your brush and just big brush. White is a foreground color, low opacity, say 20%, and just start just hitting that just a little bit on that edge. Just helps helps stop your eye from escaping a little bit. The side's already got a dark area there. So let's have a look there before and after. Okay, that's pretty good. What I like to do towards the end is just check my adjustment, just check my white point. And as you can see, I actually can add a little bit more light into this image. So if I click, hold the option key down and grab hold of the white point, pull it across, I can see where my clipping is going to be. And you can see it's in that corner there. So I'll just take it up to the start where there's no clipping. And that will just be a subtle adjustment in the light which is good not clipped anything so you know this is the vision I had when I was out shooting I knew this was kind of the look I wanted I didn't quite get the sunset um, I, I wanted to get but it's quite nice you know you've got colors and the composition is really nice the, everything should be sharp in the image so that looks pretty good so pretty happy with the way that's turned out okay so let's flatten that command shift E or control shift E and we better save it and we're going to call it CL0002 L L for Leica of course this was shot on the Leica SL2 and let's have a look at a little um, put a little border around it a little white border command option C to increase canvas size and there is our there's our image and uh, I think that looks pretty alright one more thing I'll do before I finish this video up is I will go into um, curve adjustment layer option click on the auto button and then I'll just scroll through these and see if I have somehow for some reason introduced a color cast now you can see that's warming it right up and um, sometimes I like to click OK, okay that's the one I like, I'll click OK and then go back, turn it on and off and go which do I prefer, warmer, more magenta or do I want somewhere in between, let's take it back to zero and then just slowly bring it up till that magenta disappears, that's 40% I actually can't like the a bit of magenta this time so maybe just a little bit less 16% that's probably done it just enough to get rid of that that bit of magenta cast okay command shift E to flatten that command S to save it and that is a complete waste of time no that's a quick it's a it's nice, I like it. We'll see. It'll be nice to make a print of that. Okay guys, well I hope that was a worth well thirty minutes or so or longer. And um yeah, if you like this video then uh, I'll just keep going and I'll make as many as I can. Cheers guys.